So is it just me or has the energy shifted on these over the last couple of days? What's up, y'all? It's your boy Trey, a.k.a. Daddy C, back in the building again. Thanks for tapping in, tuning into the channel today. I want to talk real quick, really get into a conversation about the new Amman Year Air Jordan 3 while you were sleeping. Um, if it's your first time here, do me a quick favor, hit that notification bell down below so you're going to stay on top of our content as we drop it. And if you've been here before, thanks for rocking out with us on the way to 5K and beyond. All right. So, you know, if you've been involved in sneakers in the last couple of days, last couple of weeks, we know that today we just had the online release of the Nike Air Jordan 3 Alma My Year while you were sleeping. So that's part two to the OG uh, the initial raised by women. This is one of my favorite pairs in my collection for sure. Uh, just a dope reimagining of the Air Jordan 3, you know, that we saw where elephant print was removed, giving suede touches all over the shoe, um, and tumbled leather everywhere. Just luxury, luxury, quilting on the inside, and, you know, really homage being paid to being raised by women. This was a shoe dedicated, like a love letter to women in the black community. Right, I'm on my year, James Whitner, where the group, they are very intentional and strong about their messaging and done that on every release that we've had up to this point and even to the one today. Um, and that is the, while you were sleeping, you know, they've been working, right? And they have a whole mantra called create at all costs um, and the visuals along with that shoe, pretty strong, right? They're talking about this agency that's created where black tax is a thing that exists in, you know, social norms and the black normal where if you're a black, you know, kind of the one that made it in your family, um, you know, and you're now the breadwinner, the, the, the one that's made it, it's on you to really help out others in your family that haven't gotten there yet, right? Um, so anyway, that's something that that's go, goes on and probably in a lot of households, not just black as well, but in this visual, this creative, they're saying that this agency is taxing creatives and they have an actual black tax that they are going to do in plain sight and they have all these creatives that are individuals like Chris Gibbs from Union, um, Nina Chanel Abney, Salahi Bimbury, and just a whole bunch of other folks. Uh, but again, strong messaging is a kind of a fictional story that's going on, but they're really stressing that while, you know, black communities, black creatives um, been targeted, um, things being taken from, you know, the creatives and repurposed by others, black people haven't given their credit, they're saying, you know, we're still creating and create at all costs. So there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes there. But anyway, that's just breaking down the story and the visuals of what's happening with this release. Um, the shoe itself, though, um, again, this is the OG, the 1.0 Air Jordan 3. The 2.0, the while you were sleeping, you know, kind of gives you the same effects and treatment. But you're getting black leather, obviously, um, more of the age midsole. And then you're getting the kind of mauve crimson. Uh, and gray throughout the shoe. Um, and I just really felt like the energy shift on that shoe over the last few days has been pretty, pretty wild. We saw the Discord, you know, if you're not in the Whitaker Discord, make sure you join that because they do a lot of releases and raffles, you know, just to Discord members. It was heavy in this release for the uh, Jordan 3 2, and, you know, a ton of people got W's on that shoe. And it was weird because so many people were like, nah, they're not feeling it. Of course, it's the same year we're going to see the Air Jordan 3 Black Cement drop later this year. So really like timing, right? A Black 3 and a Black 3. Um, it's not the greatest timing, but I still love this shoe and I want to add it to this collection and complete this pack, obviously. But um, what I've seen is that some, a lot of people were talking down on it, didn't feel it. But then a lot of people entered the Discord raffle anyway, and a lot of people got W's. I mean, I was seeing tons of W's. Like, it was almost automatic. If you entered that raffle, you know, they gave us a lot of pairs, and they're like, boom, here you go. You get the, you get the shoe. Um, I saw some people, you know, that did get the shoe, and then they were like, well, everybody's getting W's. Now, I don't know if I want them because of the exclusivity piece, which is bringing me to another point I made to address before we get out of here today, but... Um, yeah, so W's were, were heavy in the Discord raffle. Then the EQL raffle that's been going on, that people, a lot of people cry and complain about EQL because they can't hit on shoes. Um, a lot of W's went out from EQL as well, a ton. Now, of course, you know, as of late, the last few drops have had some issues, right? We know there were some shipping issues before with the um, Alamayer 5s, 
And with this one, there was some issue going on with the people getting charges, getting their cards declined as they were getting, you know, the, the raffle wins process. And I saw some notes from, you know, I'm on my year, of course, and, and talking about inventory issues, that more inventory was allotted than should have been for, uh, I think it was a Discord raffle maybe, and they had to go back and, but I think they really did make it right though. They went back and recharged people. You have to, you know, those payments or whatever, I guess were like a forced decline, not necessarily your car didn't have, you know, adequate cash. Um, but then they went back and gave people a second chance um, and re ran the card or sent a link so they could run the card again. Um, so that was legit. And I will say I hit on the Discord raffle, you know, that first go round, no issues, and got my shipping notification today from FedEx. So I'm excited to get those in. Um, I don't have the updated date yet of when they deliver, but hopefully end of the week, I'm guessing, or Saturday, something like that. As soon as they come in, dropping a review on those in hand, probably throwing more feet because I'm excited to get those and do, definitely do a side-by-side -side with the OGs. Um, but anyway, I felt the energy shift where it was like people didn't want them, then a lot of people were getting W's and people were high on them, but then people were seeing a lot more W's, so then they went back and didn't really want them so much. So that brings me to another question, man, and that is, in this sneaker, sneaker verse, what do we want, you know? I see, and I was talking with some friends about this earlier, some other uh, sneakerheads about, you know, that really sneakerheads just aren't happy <laughs> or something's going on, right? Where we want the shoe when it's limited, it's hard to get, but then we cry and complain when we get the L and we cry about bots, we cry about resellers, we say and cry that the brands need to make more pairs. Right, so then we know in this year, with so many releases, there's still you know pairs are in stores a lot of places. So allotment and supply has been plentiful. So then you get pairs where there's a lot of shoes, and then people have access to them and can get it, but then they don't want it because it's now not exclusive, hard to get. So <laughs> I was just trying to understand. I mean, I had somebody did say that you know the rarity and accessibility is a part of sneaker sneakerdom. You know, and this is sneaker universe world that we're in, um, and I get that. But at the same time, um, you know, gone are the days where you're lining up outside a Foot Locker or on the streets of New York, lined up, you know, hours and hours and hours in advance for a drop, um, because so much is digitized, right? There's online raffles, online releases. You know, you're just pushing a button. So I don't know. I'm just curious. Like, what do y'all think about that? <laughs> do you, if the shoe is less. Does it kill the hype if the shoe is more available, widely available, even if it's a super dope shoe, um, you know, and do you still want it if it is plentiful? And keep in mind, I was saying this too, that next year, supposedly production is gonna be a lot lower from Nike. And um, yeah, we're gonna see things, you know, probably gonna be harder to get, especially with the way pairs are sitting now. Um, so I don't know, like the people, I always say don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? If you like the shoe, you want the shoe, you have the means to get the shoe, get the shoe um, and if you don't get the shoe or can't get the shoe you know you gotta be able to take your L's too we all do but um, I just I don't understand the people that it's just kind of people talk out of both sides of their mouth a lot that's what I hear so is it just me am I just being a grumpy old man but <laughs> let me know down in the comments uh, that's all I want to say today well let me know if you got a W in the raffles um, if your pairs came in, if you picked up in store, because there were stores that have pairs today, you know, all of my years, social status, and so forth. And um, what do you think of the shoe, right? Rate that um, while you were sleeping, Air Jordan 3, on a scale of 1 in 10. And I will see you on the next one, hopefully soon as that pair comes in for me. All right, y'all, see you on the next one. Peace.